This program is sponsored by Chocolations, located at 607 East Boston Post Road in Mamaroneck. Tonight on The Local Live, the Village of Mamaroneck and Sport Time have agreed to a one-year contract extension. The Lodge Marine Mamaroneck community honored those who have served in the U.S. military at the Memorial Day Parade and ceremonies. See what's been cooking just in front of Mamaroneck High School at Bergerim. And be sure to stay tuned after tonight's show to see who has won in this year's LMC TV Award Night. Good evening, it's Thursday, May 30th. I'm Sibylla Chipaziwa and welcome to The Local Live. The Mamanek Village Board of Trustees passed a resolution Monday night about Sport Time's continued operations at Harbor Island Park. The agreement between Sport Time and the village has been extended for a year, allowing the facility to continue operations through August 2020. It includes requirements for a week-free weekly group session and a free introductory clinic as well as additional discounts for residents. The village also has plans to put out a request for proposals for year-round tennis at the harbor next year. You already know what I'm here for. Um, we're just asking for uh, an update on the Sport Time Harbor Island situation. Uh, Ms. Carpenter, there is, if you look at our agenda tonight, uh, under the new business, uh, item Q, it's a resolution authorizing execution of an agreement with Sport Time. Uh, so we have come to an agreement with Sport Time uh, for the next year uh, to run tennis uh, pretty much as it is now with a, with a couple of minor changes which won't affect uh, your game. Uh, and then we will delve into the larger issue of uh, providing tennis in the park year round uh, in future years. Thank you so much. Thank you for your persistence and for your, you know, no, seriously, I mean, it, it, it's, there are very few people uh, who come to these meetings and who, who are as eloquent and, and as graceful as you are. And, uh, you know, you, you. You, you've been heard and, uh, you know, I know it, it's a hard process, but, you know, the wheels of government grind slowly. Both the Mamaroneck and Rhinex school districts held elections this past week on May 21st. In Mamaroneck, the $139 million budget for the upcoming school year was passed by 86% of votes. Incumbent Rena Beter and freshman Christian Zambrano won the two seats up for election on the school board. And over in Rhinex, the community voted to keep the district under the New York State tax levy cap for the eighth year in a row, with 79% of voters approving a $43 million budget for 2019 to 2020. New member Gloria Spedefino Gali and incumbent president Pietro Fasolino were elected to serve on that Board of Education. The proposed Hampshire Country Club residential development was discussed at the last Mamaroneck Village Planning Board meeting, particularly the environmental effects that the construction could have. Last week, two Planning Board members demanded more information of the development lawyers and requested that the applicant be more cooperative in addressing concerns so as to improve understanding. And we're trying to understand the environmental impact of this. And frankly, some of the answers that you're giving us just don't make any sense. Well, I mean, you, you know, you're going to, you want to, I'll take the trees, for example. You want to cut down 432 trees, some of which are quite large and quite old, and the, the sum of them create quite a canopy. Now, yes, there are, there are, there's wildlife that lives there. There are birds that are resident birds, some there year round, some come and go with the migration season. You're also in the middle of a major flyway along the eastern seaboard where migrating birds are heading north and south of here, which is completely not addressed at all in the, in the, in the document. But th no, but that's, respectfully, that's, but that's not, but that's not accurate. That's not accurate. There, there is a, there, there's a study on what types of species are using 
the, the, and live these, there. They live there. Right, and right? you're not going to cut trees a, during wait, wait, a hold, certain wait, period of time. I know all this. I yeah, read it. Yeah, and there's and there's a, and there's a and there's what makes you think just because you give us an answer on your report that your answer is right? Have you ever stopped and smelled? And prom is right around the corner. To ensure safety on the roads, the Westchester County Department of Public Safety and Taxi and Limousine Commission have tips on how to get by using ride shares. During prom season, we see a lot of different ways where the students are getting to proms. Uh, one of those methods of transportation is ride sharing vehicles. So we just wanted to talk a little bit about ride share safety. When you book a ride sharing vehicle on the app and the vehicle pulls up, one of the first things that you should do is make sure that the driver knows your name. Uh, don't introduce yourself to the driver, let the driver introduce the driver to you and confirm that the driver is here to pick you up. The second thing that you should do is make sure that the license plate on the vehicle that's picking you up matches the vehicle that was displayed in your app. The third thing that you can do before getting into the vehicle is to make sure that the child safety locks are not activated in the rear of the car that you're getting into. Always remember to never fall asleep in the back of the vehicle. You should also be monitoring the driver's route on the app just to make sure he's not going off course. Westchester County, the Westchester County Police Department, the Westchester County Tax and Limousine Commission, and Westchester County Stop DWI and Drug Prevention Office put a lot of effort into helping to make sure that kids in this county and those visiting us for the prom season have a safe prom. So we ask for support from the parents and the families that are sending their kids off to the prom make sure that they can do whatever they can to help make sure it's safe for them. And the county police, in conjunction with the Taxi and Limousine Commission and the Office of Stop DWI and Drug Prevention, we're going to do whatever we can to also welcome them to the proms, but also to make sure that they're having a safe night. Do you have a great idea for a YouTube video or a short film, but don't know how to make it happen? LMC TV has what you need. Our equipment cage is stocked with professional quality cameras, tripods, lighting, sound, cabling, and more. Our 768 square foot studio features a full lighting grid, wraparound green screen, teleprompter, TriCaster, and high definition cameras. To reserve equipment, contact us at reserve at lmctv.org. In an era of media consolidation and globalization, the PEG channels root our media in local communities, in local voices, and that is absolutely indispensable. A lot of people are able to get job, job training, information, just from using public access. This is about the arts. This is about accessibility. This is about transparency. Great youth media programs, programs giving people second chances in being able to learn new skills. Peg stations give viewers critical information about their communities and offer an important platform for local residents. Peg channels connect us to our communities and they enrich our lives every single day of the year. The FCC should work for communities, not powerful cable companies. This battle is a lot like the fight for net neutrality. Net neutrality is really about every voice, no matter how small being heard. The same is true here with the PEG channels. The main threat facing media centers nationwide is that the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, is going to redefine how we receive our funding. It will impact the people who we're trying to serve. They're actually paying for us in their cable bill. Um, and now all of a sudden the cable operator is taking their money and then deducting it from us. They cannot be in a position where they basically force the shuttering of peg channels all across our country. We need Congress to tell the FCC that they're out of bounds. It's pretty clear to me that the FCC is an agency that does the public's will begrudgingly. And it fits and starts. 
We're talking about supporting causes, charities, education, youth, seniors, democracy. This is not a left issue. This is not a right issue. This is an everybody issue. If you care about protecting local community access television, raise your voices. Larchmont and Mamaronek have spent the past week paying tribute to the fallen who have served their country. Here are some highlights of how the community observed Memorial Day. We're honoring the men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military here today at the Memorial Day Parade in Larchmont and Mamaronek. We're really excited to be out here, to be able to celebrate the uh, village of Larchmont and the town of Mamaroneck together to honor our, our fallen uh, heroes. We really love taking the time to remember those who have fallen for our country and honor them and to bring us all together as a community. I have a very special feeling about Memorial Day. I was thinking today, uh, my father was a World War II vet, wrote letters during training about uh, the possibility of, of people dying in service. And I, you know, it's very important that we take these moments and really step back and think about the sacrifices that these folks made. People who made the ultimate sacrifice. They had uh, years of living ahead of themselves, but they fought in uh, various wars and conflicts, and they sacrificed their lives so that we could have freedom, and we need to appreciate that sacrifice. Uh, they were young men when they died, and young women, and uh, it was a terrible loss, but they, they did something that preserved this country and its democracy. Memorial Day is the day that we uh, remember all the soldiers and the servicemen and women that have fallen protecting this great country and that allows us to live the lifestyle that we do. And uh, it's a very solemn event and a day of remembrance. We continue to lose heroes every day in places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, and in military training action accidents and missions around the world. From the American Revolution to our current operations against terrorism, one million American men and women have made the supreme sacrifice while serving in wars and conflict. We honor all of them. developmental movement disorder typically diagnosed in childhood and involves um, tics, involuntary uncontrollable movements and noises um, in which kids have, if you have two motor tics and one vocal tic that lasts for more than a year that qualifies for a diagnosis of Tourette syndrome. I actually had the cursing tick, which was, it's very rare and I happened to get it. Tell us about that, the cursing yes. tick, because that is what is portrayed on TV. Right, I get, so that's what people think of because I guess it's entertaining in the media, but as Matt said, it's actually a rare symptom. So less than 10% of people with Tourette have what it's called coprolalia, that's the technical word for it. Um, and you're, you're not required to have the cursing tick in order to qualify for the diagnosis. I think for sure ticks do bother other people because I'll give you an example. In class, right, everyone's trying to learn and whatnot, and you're uncontrollable snorting. I mean, you know that you can't control it, but the other people may be bothered by it. And yeah, I mean, it will definitely 
bother other people. And I think that's why the education piece yeah, exactly. is so important because once other kids and other you know, adults understand that this is involuntary movement, you're not doing this on purpose to bother them or to, and, or to annoy them, and it annoys the person with Tourette more than it bothers it, it does, yeah. the people around them. And I, I think once kids understand you know, that this is a neurological disorder and you can't help it, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think their acceptance really increases. There's two major things I like people to know. That Tourette's doesn't define a person, just like a person may have like asthma or something like that. It's just another thing about them. Like I'm Matt Eskenazi and I have Tourette's. I, I'm not the kid with Tourette's. But, and also, you can't control it. So don't, you know, like make fun of them for something they can't control. Because like we said, they don't like it more than, they don't like to have it more than you would like to hear it. Here's some of what's happening around town. Heat up your Friday night with the Cab Calloway Orchestra. This jazz group will be sure to keep you on your feet as they bring the authentic sensation of modern jazz to the Emmeline Theater on May 31st at 8 p.m. Sail in the Mimarnik Harbor with STEM Alliance this weekend. The organization has teamed up with Soundwaters this summer to bring a hands-on learning experience for families. Come aboard and learn about the ecosystems, animal adaptations, and more on June 1st from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Join the Sheldrake Environmental Center for a peaceful Saturday hike on June 1st. The guided walk will include mindful breathing and nature meditation. The experience embraces all weather and starts at 10 a.m. at 685 Weaver Street in Larchmont. And don't forget about the LMC TV Summer Boot Camp for novice filmmakers ages 12 to 17. This new five-day crash course will teach the art of making a film, but will be hands-on, featuring local creators who are working in the field. Be sure to register soon as space is limited. The boot camp will run July 8th through July 12th. LMC Cast. The whole system is hot. All right, cool. Right. cool. I definitely would recommend doing podcasts if you are someone that likes to get something off the chest so you want to just talk about anything in the world that just might interest you. Podcast here at LMC TV is amazing. I hope, I hope you're uh, listening out there. A local resident is running two businesses in the county. One is a kickboxing gym, and his latest venture is Burgerim, an Israeli franchise that promises several options made to order, even for vegetarians. Burgerim uh, is an international franchise, started uh, overseas, came to America a couple years ago, uh, and started out west. The whole premise is uh, multiple burgers, different styles, different toppings, different buns, shareable, um, family boxes, things like that. Uh, we are not a fast food restaurant. Um, we would be considered more like a casual, casual dining. Um, and we specialize in burgers, shakes, fries, wings, you know, your, your, your normal bar food, but brought up a whole level. We, we took Burger Rim's, uh aesthetic guidelines but then expanded on them. We wanted to make a place that was comfortable for families, for the kids, you know, we have a high school across the street that we want to make sure that those kids can come here, get good food, get it quickly and enjoy hanging out here. Uh, you know, you don't really want to spend time in a fast food restaurant. They're designed to make you want to come and go. 
we built this place so you would want to come and spend time. Um, so we have uh, beer, we, ha we do bottles and draft, um, we have TVs playing sports and news, we're going to have outdoor seating opening up very shortly, um, we're going to do, you know, uh, events here, wing nights, game nights. Uh, we have this back area where we are right now, which is what we consider to be the party room. We shut the door, we have a separate audio visual system back here. If you wanted to do, you know, parties or events, work related events, you can control the TVs and music independently from the front of the house. So I moved to Maranek about four and a half years ago with my family from the Bronx and, um, you know, wanted to set our roots here and, and I wanted to have businesses that were part of the community and also close by. Um, you know, I used to work in Manhattan, it was an hour and a half commute every direction, you know, I, it was no such thing as a nine to five. I was gone at seven in the morning, not home till 7.30 at night. Now, I work longer hours, but at least I'm in my hometown, you know, I'm not far from home. I can keep a close eye on the businesses and make sure that they're operating properly. I own a few other different businesses and I was looking to diversify. Um, and I've always been, personally as a customer, I'm the kind of person who would order a bunch of appetizers rather than one big meal. So the concept of Burgerum being small, shareable uh, packs, two, three, party packs, family packs, you know, you can mix and match, really spoke to me as a consumer and I, and, and I was on board with the concept from the beginning. I thought it was a great concept. Uh, we offer 10% discounts to the students in town and village um, from Amaranek, Larchmont, Harris, and any of the surrounding areas. Um, we're going to be open from 10 to 10 every day, 11 to 9 on Sundays. Uh, like I said, we're going to be introducing different specials, uh, wing nights, uh, game games, fight nights, events, things like that. This week in sports, the Mamanek baseball team hosted Clarkstown North in the sectional quarterfinals. The Tigers had a lead in the third inning when they raised not one, but two Rams walks in the LMCTV Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Right, when you get into some of those hotbeds in Texas and Florida, as Menser fires to second, gets him on the tag. Great Beautiful play. throw, catch, and tag to wipe out the base runner for the second out of the inning. That was a great, great throw, perfect throw. Uh, great catch and a great you know, spin around to get the tag. So as I was starting to say, Tom, Menser's throw down to second has just improved so dramatically, oh. and he nails him at first. Plunkett with the pickoff of Cooper Smith. Gavin Zingini with the beautiful tag. As Cooper Smith was wandering just a little too far, and that ends the inning here in the top of the third. Do you have a news tip? Seen anything interesting around town? Is there breaking news in your community? Send your videos, comments, pictures, and tips to the local live, your news source of Larchmont and Mamaroneck. Remember, if you miss Thursday's live broadcast, you can catch replays off the local live twice a day on this channel and find story clips on our YouTube channel. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on things you may have missed. Thank you for watching The Local Live. I'm Sibylla Chipaziwa, but don't go anywhere just yet. We have the winners of the 29th Annual LMCTV Award Night coming right up. Thanks again, and have a good night. This program is sponsored by Chocolations, located at 607 East Boston Post Road in Mamaroneck. If you are interested in sponsoring this or other programs on LMC-TV, contact us for more information.